Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, and this is question number seven from the January 2020 International A-Level Pure Mathematics P1 paper. And this is a question about trig graphs. Here we told about figure three, which shows part of the curve C1 with the equation three sine x, where x is measured in degrees. Okay, so this is a graph of y equals three sine x. Y equals three times sine x the point p and the point q lie on c1 and are shown in figure three okay then it says state the coordinates of p and the coordinates of q so we've got to work out the coordinates of p and q and this is y equals three sine x now the graph of y equals sine x okay will look something like this i'll just draw it by the side of this it goes up to a maximum of one and a minimum of minus one we should all know this you should, you, for P1, you have to know how the sine curve looks. And it goes down to zero at 180 degrees, and it reaches its maximum point at 90 degrees. It's 90, and that's 180. And then it goes down below the x-axis, and it comes back at 360 degrees, back to zero. And this is 270 degrees. Okay, where it reaches its minimum, which is minus one. So its maximum is 1, and its minimum is minus 1. So its range is between minus 1 and 1. And then it repeats after that the same pattern again. The same pattern is repeated every 360 degrees. So if we look at this graph here, okay, this is y equals 3, of sine, 3 times sine x. Now, if you think about the transformations that we should have learned about, this represents multiplying the whole function by 3. So it represents a transformation if f, if f of x was... Um, sine x this represents y equals 3 times f of x 3 times sine x so that represents a vertical stretch of factor 3 okay so it's, it's you're multiplying the function outside the function you're multiplying the whole function by 3 and therefore it's a vertical stretch of, of, of um, factor 3 scale factor 3 which means the x coordinates are unaffected and the y coordinates are all multiplied by 3. So this point P, like if you think about this curve, compare it to that, the x, x values are going to be unaffected. So they're going to stay in the same places as they would have been there. So this is 0. This would be 90 degrees, where it reaches its maximum. This would be 180 degrees, where it comes back to 0. This would be 270 degrees, where it reaches its minimum point, And this would be 360 degrees. And they've also continued on. So basically, that's another 90. Oh, whoops, another 90. So 360 plus 90, that's going to be 450. And that's another 90, so that's going to be 540. So those, those will remain unchanged by this transformation where you multiply the whole function by 3. The only things that are going to change are the y values. They're going to be multiplied by 3. So for example, 0, 0 will stay where it is because the, the y coordinate is going to be multiplied by by 3. 0 times 3 is still 0. But the, the coordinate that was 91, 91, the y coordinate is going to be multiplied by 3. So this is going to be 93. So this is going to be 3 on the y-axis. And similarly, for the same reasoning, this 270 and minus 1 is going to be 270 and negative 3. So we can see here that we can work out the coordinates of P and Q quite easily now. P is basically, the coordinate of P is 90, 3, 90 degrees on the X, and 3 on the Y, and Q is 540 on the X, and 0 on the Y. So those are the coordinates of P and Q. Um, and yeah, we said degrees, so that's why we use degrees. If it said radians, we'd have to use radians. So it says degrees, so that's good. So P is 90. 3, 90 on the x, 90 degrees, and 3 on the y. And the coordinates of q are, as we said, 540 and 0. 540 and 0. Okay, so that's uh, part A. Pretty simple. Um, that's quite a simple um, trig question, really, compared to what they have had in the past. So, you know, that was probably a relief for some of the students because those were kind of, kind of some of the tougher questions, the trig graph questions. So for P1, you must know your trig curves. You must know how sin, y equals sine x, cosine x, tan x look, and you have to know how to transform them according to the transformations that you learn. 
So it's very important that you know your trig graphs properly. Uh, their basic shape, how they look between 0 and 360, and then how you know they repeat after that, and how they're affected by the transformation. It's very important that you, you, you know this for, for P1. This is something that's new in P1, before these kind of things were in P2, and they didn't focus so much on the curves rather than the solving of equations. Now they're in P1, it's just looking at the, the trig curves in more detail. Okay, now part B, it says, a different curve, C2, has equation y equals 3 sine x plus k, where k is a constant. So basically what that means is that something has been added to the whole function. So it's like the original function that we had, f of x, has been multiplied by 3, and something's been added to it. So the function that we see above here, the one that's already drawn, is like something's been added to that function. Okay, something's been added to it, and that causes a vertical trans translation. Either it moves up or down, depending if k is positive or negative. It says the curve C2 has a maximum y value of 10. So the maximum y value is 10. Okay, so that means this maximum value 3 went up to 10. And it says the point R is a minimum point on C2 with the smallest positive x coordinate. State the coordinates of R. Okay, so the minimum point on C2 with the smallest positive x coordinate. Well, the, the minimum value of, on the curve is this value which is 270 and minus 3. That's the lowest value on the curve. Okay, on this curve, this is um, three, it's 3 sine x. Okay. And it tells us that the minimum value has a... Um, the curve the point has a on the smallest positive x coordinate. Yeah. So this is the first time it reaches its minimum value. This is the first... This is the smallest positive angle at which it reaches its minimum value. It's going to reach a minimum value again somewhere over here which is 540 plus 90. But this is the first time it reaches its minimum value. So this is 270 minus 3. But in the curve that we want, we've got to work out what the coordinates of that is. So basically, we got to use this fact that the maximum has become 10. And we got to think about how what happened for the maximum value to become 10. And then use that to work out what the, uh, what the coordinates of the minimum value are. So let's have a look. So I've got the curve drawn here i mentioned this is the point r so at the moment r is at um at the moment r is at um minus three and p is at three that's before any transformation has taken place what i'm going to do is i'm going to extend this axis a bit i'm going to extend this axis a bit it tells us that p has moved such that its coordinates now or the y value of um, the, the curve C2 has a maximum y value of 10. So this maximum value, for example, this point P, that's, you know, it's a maximum value it's going to reach, which is 3, has now gone up to 10. Okay, so if I move this up to 10. All right, so I've just taken like a copy of the thing. So the P has moved up to 10 now. Okay, the coordinates of this point are now... 90 and 10 so basically the whole curve you can see has moved up it's moved upwards by seven units so the minimum point which was here before okay that's what it was before that minimum point before it was moved up okay it used to be this was at 270 and it used to be minus three so its new position is going to be moved up seven spaces as well that that's that has to everything's moved up by the same amount because you've added k k must be seven okay so that must be a 270 and minus three plus seven which is four okay so you've got basically k is equal to seven here Does it tell us to find k no it just says state the coordinates of r yeah so we can say that in this case k must equal seven and therefore the coordinates of r are going to be 270 and minus 3 plus 7 which is 270 and 4 and there's the answer to part b it's pretty simple the whole curve moved up seven units because the min maximum went from 3 to a 10 therefore the minimum value which is the first time it occurs on the positive side is when 
where, where R is, this point we call R, which is at 270, that must have gone from minus 270 minus 3 up to 274, added 7 units to it. And there's the answer to part B. So it's a pretty straightforward question this time, the one on trig from this, this paper. Um, thank you for watching. Any other questions on trig from P1 papers, you will find on, in the playlist, which I'm going to place somewhere over here. Um, and also on this side, I'll have the playlist for this paper that this question is from, which is a January 2020 um, P1 paper. And I will put a subscribe button here for you if you want to subscribe to the channel. And I'll put a link to some other P1 paper on the top of the on a card on the top of the screen. So if you want to see other P1 papers, you can do so. So there you are. Um, I hope you understood and I hope to see you soon again. Thank you.